Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hasha Ali Khan. So now I am going to start a new subject. Financial systems and market. Financial institutions and market. Just uh, last video I have completed on business economics. So many videos I have uploaded on different topics like uh, financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting, corporate accounting, income tax, business statistics, computerized accounting. So many different subjects videos I have already uploaded in them. So go to the playlist of my channel, select your subject, watch the videos and enhance the knowledge. Get a good command on all the subjects. So I got so many requests from my viewers, from my students to start the subject of financial institutions and market. So now I'm going to start. This is the first video on this subject. Totally five units I'm going to cover up. In this first unit, I'm going to cover up the topics of the concept of Indian financial system. What are the components of the financial system? What are the functions of the financial system? And the concept of flow of fund matrix. Next, a financial system and economic development. And recent developments in Indian financial system. And lastly, the weaknesses of Indian financial system. These are the topics I am going to cover up in this unit number one. So before starting the concept of Indian financial system, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Now, <clears throat> first of all, the concept of financial system so the Indian financial system is classified into two sectors that is organized sector and unorganized sector. The organized sector is that sector which is fully managed, controlled by the government and unorganized sector are, is that sector which is not fully controlled by the government. So here uh, it is classified into organized and unorganized. However, the focus area of Indian financial system will always be more on development and growth of organized sector. Economic development depends much on the financial sector. So government will focus more and more on organized financial system, organized sector through which the economic development can take place by using this financial system. Now because of this sector provides a good base on the entire financial system in India. Complete financial system depends on organized sector. So government is focusing, giving more concentration on this sector, organized sector. The organized or the formal financial sector consists of network. So complete organized financial sector is a network of banks, financial institutions, investment institutions and a range of financial instruments. So it's a complete system. The Indian financial system consists of a complete system of banks, financial institutions, investment institutions and different varied financial instruments. Organized financial system comes under the responsibility of Ministry of Finance, RBA, SEBI and other regulatory bodies. There are so many regulatory bodies which regulate the organized sector in India. The main regulatory bodies, bodies are Ministry of Finance. First of all, the complete organized sector, financial sector is controlled by Ministry of Finance, RBA, Reserve Bank of India, SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India and many other regulatory bodies are there which govern the complete organized sector of financial system. Now the organized financial system is divided into four components. So first of all you have to remember the complete organized financial system consists of four components. The first is financial institutions, second financial markets, third financial instruments and lastly financial services. These four are called 
the components of financial system not only in india any country of the world wherever financial system is there there are four components the first one financial institutions financial markets financial instruments and lastly financial services now financial markets and its types just now i have discussed about financial system now i'm focusing on financial <clears throat> market in ordinary language the market means a place where commodities are bought and sold <clears throat> where buyers and sellers meet each other that is called a market but from financial system point of view financial market is a market where the finance is borrowed and lended there are people who supply the funds and there are people who require the funds so it's a market where the lenders and borrowers will meet that is called financial market the financial market is a place where dealings of financial claims take place and price is set dealings of financial claims financial claims are the <clears throat> instruments through which money is borrowed and lended and the price of the financial securities is fixed <clears throat> in the market and the need or requirement financial markets are those mechanisms that enable the participants the participants in the financial market are borrowers lenders and financial institutions so all these borrowers lenders financial institutions all these are the participants in the financial market in order to invest in order to borrow <clears throat> to handle the financial claims now these markets also facilitate the participant to combine their demand and requirement and set prices of their claims so all the participants in the financial markets like borrowers lenders financial institutions banks all these participants will play a role in borrowing and lending the finance and setting the prices of the claims in the form of shares debentures bonds securities the prices will be fixed by the interaction of the participants now in india the financial markets are again classified into two categories remember in india the complete financial markets are divided into two types that is capital market and money market so first we will focus on capital market capital market is a segment of financial market which is concerned with long term borrowing and lending of funds where long term long term means more than one year where investor invest the money for more than one year and borrower will borrow the money for more than one year that is called long term funds so here in capital market the borrower and lender will come together in order to deal with the transaction of borrowing and lending for more than one year long term funds are dealt in capital markets so capital market is a market of long term funds or securities with a maturity period of above one year so who are the participants in this capital market long term funds market so normally the participants are mutual funds then insurance firms then financial institutions foreign investors individual and corporate form major player of capital market so all these mutual fund insurance companies financial institutions foreign investors and uh, corporates uh, i mean companies and individuals all these will participate in the capital market now capital market are again divided into two categories primary market and secondary market the primary market is a market of first issue whenever a company issue the securities first time that market is called primary market or first issue market so it's a market for the securities which are issued for the first time the primary market includes new issue market euro issue market and private placements so these are the participants in the primary market new issue market first time when the security comes in the market that market is called primary market 
So there is no exchange. The only thing is issue. The first issue market is called primary market. Secondary market, the market where existing securities are bought and sold. Old securities are purchased, bought and sold. That market is called a secondary market. Best example of security market is stock exchange. Security exchanges. In every country, we have so many stock exchanges where securities are bought and sold. The old securities are bought and sold. That is called secondary market. It deals with old security which already exists in the market. The secondary market consists of securities exchanges. Over the counter, OCT it is called. Over the counter exchanges in India. And securities trading corporation of India. These are the examples of secondary market so what I have explained about capital market and types of capital market primary market and secondary market now money market I already told you financial market consists of two types that is capital market and money market so capital market is a long-term funds market money market is a short-term funds market where the borrowers and lenders will borrow and lend for a short period. Short period means less than one year. The investor will invest for less than one year and the borrowers will also borrow for less than one year in the money market. Because business houses requires funds for both purposes, long term funds as well as short term funds. So money market is a market for short term security which has a life of less than one year. So some of the money market instruments are commercial, commercial paper, certificate of deposit, gilded security, call money market, etc. These are the instruments which are dealt in money market for borrowing and lending for short term purposes. Like commercial, say commercial paper, certificate of deposit, gilded securities, call money. These are the examples, instruments in money market. Now, the next topic I am going to discuss is functions of financial system. So far, I have discussed about the concept of financial system and then financial markets. Now, I am going to explain you about functions of financial system. What is the main function of financial system? Why financial system is there in every country? And here, the financial system, uh, functions of financial system are first one, provision of liquidity. Actually, liquidity means convertibility. That means we are converting one asset into another asset. Example, a person is having money, hard cash. Simply by holding the cash, he will not get any return. So what he want? He want a return on his money, on his savings. So what he can do? He can invest the money to a person who needs money. And on that investment, the person will get the return. The investor will get the return. Who will give the return? The companies, the borrowers, which requires funds for their businesses. So first function, provision of liquidity. The, pro the, primary, the primary function of financial system is the provision of money and monetary assets for the purpose of production. First of all, we have so many producers, so many companies producing the goods they need the funds and this financial system will provide the funds for production will provide the funds for making the goods and services by the companies by the business houses secondly encourages savings the amount which is invested in the company will come from the savings of the people people will earn more money from that money after spending for his day to day I mean requirements he is having excess money surplus money this surplus money can be saved can be invested so Indian financial system has a function that it should encourage the savings of the people if there are no saving opportunities the people will consume when the consumption increases there are many problems that just like inflation will arise cost push inflation or demand pull inflation so here the government will encourage the people to save the money through financial system so money will be mobilized from the savers to the investors now 
The financial system encourages savings by providing different variety of security which serve the preferences of different investors and savers. Different people will have different preference of investment. Some people will make the investment to get a regular return. Some people will make the investment for capital appreciation. So different people will have different perspectives of investment. So here the financial system will provide good opportunity to the investors according to their preferences. Next mobilizing of savings, collecting of savings, just like mutual fund or insurance companies, investment companies, these are mobilizing a huge amount of funds from different individual savers and mobilize these funds and hand it over to production either for corporate sector or to the government. So the financial system mobilizes the savings for facilitating the consequent functions of finance. Every business requires finance. Every organization requires finance. So the financial system will provide the funds for performing the finance function. Now allocation of funds. That means the financial system assigns the funds mobilized from the lenders to the investors. That means these funds which are saved, which are mobilized should be invested. Last one, risk absorption. See here, whenever we invest the money, always risk is attached and different securities will have different forms of risk. So this risk will be absorbed in the prices of the securities. That's why if the security has a higher risk, then the market price will be more. If the security is having a lower risk, the market price will be less. So prices depends on the risk. So this financial system will absorb the risk in the securities accordingly. The people who make the investment should know that he is taking the risk or not taking the risk. Simple example, if a person purchases equity shares, it's more risky because there is no guarantee whether dividend will be received or not. Similarly, if a person purchases a bond or a uh, debenture, then in that case, he is sure of getting the interest, fixed rate of interest, whether the company earns profit or loss. So less risk is attached. So all the risk will be absorbed in the securities through this financial system. So this, in this first video, I have explained you about the concept of financial system, financial market and the functions of financial system. In examination, a theory question will be asked regarding this financial system, financial markets or functions of financial system. Inshallah, we'll continue the next topic in the subject of financial institutions and markets in the next video.